Now, you know, Jack and I are not afraid of a little deep and meaningful. We do it in our own private time, not necessarily always on, on the podcast or uh, <laughs> Let's get social media. But today is a really nice little conversation that we should all have a little bit more. And those of you that kind of know a little bit about me and follow my general thoughts that go around my head will know that I'm a fan of these kind of like philosophical conversations where we challenge ourselves to think a little bit deeper. And this is exactly what that is. We don't really talk about anything specific. Um, because that's the whole point of philosophy, Jacko. You don't have, there is no specifics. You can just talk about whatever you want. We, we go wide and we go deep simultaneously, <laughs> if that's even possible. Um, this for me is one of those where it's like, if um, me and Tim lived in Australia, I feel like we'd hang out with Jack. It's friends. like that, that's where we're at. Mm. Um, and that's what's, that's, what's quite, that's what's quite cool. I feel like probably, Tim, could, you could go back to, to the days of... Um, being on the beach and just like smoke a couple of doobies and then you'd have some like really <laughs> wacky conversations with you. <laughs> good times, good times. Am I, allowed, am I allowed to say that on the phone? <laughs> anyway, um, whether I have, yeah, you can, you can leave that in or edit it out. Um, you may, if everybody like Tim's not made a comment there. <laughs> I'm going to leave him guessing, Jack. I'm going to leave him guessing. Um, before, right, we're going to get into the podcast in a second, but before we do that, we need to tell you about Black Friday. Black Friday is on. As if you, like, if you, the only ways you don't know that is if you live in a box these days because Black Friday is, I don't know if you know, Jacko, it's kind of a thing. Um, it is a thing. So we... No one even knows when Black Friday actually is because people have like plug it all month. We're not like that. We just, we've tried to keep it to just a, a crazy amount. But what is crazy is the offer on our best programs, best and most popular. Well, they're all, are they the best? If maybe it's the, 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 I think the it's, most I'm going to put it out there. I think looking at the work that we did on this program it is the best. And I, I would put our handstand programs up with the best handstand programs in the world because... It's coached really well, obviously. It's based on <laughs> the scientific evidence of kind of going because skill acquisition is not easy, right? You're trying to learn something quite yeah. complicated, and we properly did a job on this one. It's not just like here's 50 drills it might get your handstand. We're like here's 10 drills that will get you a handstand, and I'm 100 percent sure if you put the time in using our program, you will learn to handstand. So if that's been on your to-do list for forever, or only just recently, there is probably no better time to get the world-leading handstand program at a reduced price. Yeah, so it's 50% off. They're normally 99 quid, so you get it for 49 quid, which I think, if you do the math, it's probably slightly more than 50% off, but it's just the way the thing... So anyway, you're all good. For 49 quid, that gets you, you buy it. It's not a membership or anything like that. It's 49 quid. You get the uh, the program for lifetime access to all of that. And if you are uh, going for the Frog to Handstand program, so there are two programs. The Frog to Handstand is about building up the strength and the control the learn to handstand is about the fastest way into getting into your handstand. Um, there is assessments to track uh, where your starting points is. There's assessments all the way through to track your progress. You've got support from the online community of other people that are uh, following all of our programs. And also, obviously, us as the coaches, me, Tim, the rest of the coaching team, uh, they're on, on the online platform that you get to interact with, ask questions, um, and, yeah, support you along your way and your journey to learning how to handstand so bag a bargain before the offer ends 31st of november so bag it before the end of the month 49 quid whichever one you choose maybe even want both you can work through them at different times you, you maybe you work on learn to handstand first and then you're like i'll have the strength later um up to you get out there and learn something cool um, code is black friday in capitals do you know capital letters baby do you know what we've done we've got this far through the intro we've not even said the guest name it's jack white's from attuned <laughs> um and no, we're gonna it's philosophy you just gotta you gotta you roll it matter. there's we, no rules do we even have a name yeah. am i even jacko well he's introduced himself in a minute so you can find out all about him we can listen to a really nice little reflective conversation enjoy jack white on the movement strength and play podcast roll that jingle Listen, players, <laughs> you're listening to the Movement, Strength and Play podcast by the School of Calisthenics. Here are your hosts, Tim and Jacko. Jack White, welcome to the podcast. How are you doing, buddy? I'm well, thanks, mate. Thanks for having me on. Uh, we're, uh, we're excited for, for this conversation to go to potential we like me and tim every now and again we like we like to go we like to go and take a bit of a deep dive i like to go deeper and get a bit get a bit personal so i'm excited to go to potentially 
um, some new depths with you. For for the for the, maybe the one listener of the Move It Strength and Play podcast that for some reason hasn't come across you on Instagram, doesn't know who you are. Uh, for the, for that idiot, would you give us a bit of an intro um, <laughs> as to you know what is Jack White, what is attuned um, about? Um, because we're looking at this sort of uh, marriage of philosophy and strength training or movement, which I think is uh, yeah, it's a, it's a fascinating one. Yeah, yeah, it's it's been a trip for me. It's it's a beautiful world to explore. Um, really, where I'm sitting at the moment is helping people understand their bodies to heal their bodies through movement and then obviously progress towards a kind of strength which is uncommon fluid real world exciting and alongside that just using the whole practice of training to really go deep and get to know yourself in as many ways as possible and that's where the philosophy uh, part comes in and i kind of came across the blend um I guess by accident, um, I was initially a philosophy student years ago at uni. That was my degree. And at the time I loved strength training, weightlifting, a bit of calisthenics too. Yeah. Um, but I never made any connection between the two. It was very much like I have the head part of myself and the body part of myself. And I've got like the knowledge and it's book knowledge. And then I have my training, which is very physical. Um, and I think as I learnt um, as I went through life, went through a few hardships, uh, relationships ending or like my dad passed away at one point, um, injuries, things like this, I started to have to think about why I was training and what all that philosophy knowledge that I'd built actually meant for my like life practically. Right. So that's a tune, it's bringing it into the body, making it real. So, Jack, give us a little bit of a just bring that to life a little bit for for people that are listening. So, um, let's talk about like where do you, you can start and, and either way. How does that look at look from a philosophy perspective coming into movement or movement coming into philosophy? Like, just give a what does your training look like, and how does this how does this kind of like blend really? Yeah, give people a bit of a mental picture about how it, how it kind of all clicks. Mm, yeah, sweet. So, um, from the movement coming into philosophy side. It could mean considering what training gives you. So like, what is it that it's filling within you? How is it enriching your life? Um, when you're moving, when you're doing an exercise, perhaps when you're approaching a session or even a particular rep of an exercise, how are you approaching it? What are you looking for from it on a technical level, um, within your program? What level is it giving you a particular emotion that you might be looking for and how is the way you execute that one tiny piece reflective of how you want to live on the broader level? Um, and when you go back from the philosophy angle, it's basically like if you learn a new idea, um, then it's trying not to leave that new idea at the conceptual level. It's trying to actually chew on it, understand it, put it to use in your life and digest it before you then go and hunt for more and more new ideas. Yeah. Uh, there's um, there's something for me around this, and it's one of the reasons why I wanted to uh, to talk to you as well. Of like, and, and shout out to a friend Sarah Moore who put us put me put me onto you. And one of the first things I come across with, with your um, content was like um, so, some handstand work, um, but rather than just sort of keep putting across the same relatively like teaching points that everyone's doing to some degree or just you know people teaching slightly but it was it was the you were you were coming at it from a completely different angle and I was like okay this is this is this is interesting and um my and, and me and Tim have been on a, on a a journey since we finished used to play like rugby um where your philosophy and idea of your body and training is very different to then how we think about it now and I went through a transition over a number of years of like you know when you're playing rugby and just trying to be the best you can be and just, you have to hammer yourself to get better and you've got a coach pushing you and all the lads are pushing you. It's all push, 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 push. And it took me a long time to get out of that mentality when I was no longer playing rugby and, and, and going into calisthenics. And I probably got to a point where I was like, I thought I'd, oh, I've, made, yeah, I've made quite a nice change here and I'm a bit more in tune with my body and, uh, and thought that that was sort of the journey complete almost. Whereas recently I've... Um, 
I've been reflecting and thinking on my body, how I'm training, how I feel, and feel far more connected now in a way that I'm, how can I best describe it? It's like I, I used to look at um, an injury and feeling of pain and had many of them playing rugby of like my body's let me down. And when my body can't do something like it's, it's like I'm having a, there's like this tussle between me and my body, even though we're the same thing. Whereas now I'm seeing it in a much different way of like my body's going, Hey Jacko, like you're doing something wrong. <laughs> like I'm doing my best and I'm adapting. But part of this is like, I'm trying to talk to you and like, let, let, let's listen and let's do this thing together. That probably sounds a bit crazy, a bit wacky. And if I'd heard myself say that like five years ago, I'd be like, what's this guy on about? But, um, Am I am I am I on the right lines of like how you would if if you was working with me how you would be sort of approaching that and and, and what was what would some of your advice is to be for people that are are feeling disconnected from themselves in their bodies when they're training? That would be exactly the line of questioning that I I'm all about. Um, the advice is listen and remember that it's you in there. It's you in your body. This is something that. A wonderful yoga teacher of mine said, and I think he was told by a wonderful yoga teacher of his, <laughs> but it's, remember, it's you in there. Um, and this attitude, particularly with sport, where you're using your body as a tool to reach an external measure or succeed in some way, um, but you're not listening to your body. You're just, it's just a slave. You just need it to get the work done. That's something that I totally relate to. That's where I came from, really. And I think pushing my body to the extreme without having that dialogue of listening and observing was the reason why, you know, I've had so many injuries. And then by extension, obviously, as you said, you learn from those injuries. Um, but the advice to someone who's starting out or who is perhaps not wanting to learn the hard way, I would say is to listen to the whisper before you get hit by the brick. <laughs> I think <laughs> a few of us who've been training for a while would understand that one. Yeah. Yeah. And what about for someone, you know, there'll be, me, me five or me, me 10 years ago, if I was listening to this 10 years ago, I'd be like, what are those three blokes on about? Like, come on, princess, like, let's go training. Um, <laughs> let's go smash yourselves. Cause that's the way you get better. Like what, how, how do you, I mean, it's, maybe it's China. How do you introduce some, con some softer concepts to someone like that? Or actually you don't, you don't need to, because that person is going to, they need to, they need to go on their own journey to come to a point where they're then actually ready to open up to, to some ideas around this. That's such a huge question, man. It's a really good question. And I often wrangle with that one as well. Wait, let's go um, deep. <laughs> yeah. Cause I think if I, if, if I rewind to the time when I started training, which would have been, um, probably a bit over 10 years ago, I don't think. I would have understood that. And I, I think people did tell me, I think people did try to tell me, um, I had well-meaning mentors. I had some older guys in the, the school gym when I started training, um, and they were planting the seeds there. And I, I, I intellectually sort of understood that like, yes, you know, if, if your stress bucket overflows, you're going to get sick or, um, if you under recover, you're going to run into issues. But I think I kind of just had to learn it my own way. And unfortunately, suffering tends to be the best teacher for a lot of these big lessons. Um, so yeah, I think the best you can do if you're trying to help someone out is just plant the seed, you know, but, but if you, the more pushy you are about trying to get an idea across, it's almost like the more that person feels it's not their own idea and then they go even harder, they <laughs> disengage. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, but I do think it's one of those things where like the longer you train and, and the more you have to consider your own longevity, the more the open dialogue with your body has to be there. Um, and life will eventually at some point humble each of us to the point where we have to listen. Um, but I'm not expecting many 17 year olds surging with testosterone, smashing the weights after rugby to, to be at that point yet. I think it's fair enough that they feel pretty invincible. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit, Jack, about, um, I think from my experience as a strength and conditioning coach working with athletes um, over a decade of, of get behavior change. And this is often going to link back into philosophy and then sometimes um, identity. So if someone identifies as a, I train a certain way, mm. let's like leave that as a blank. And that certain thing that I'm doing or the way that I'm doing it is breaking me and I keep getting injured. How can people 
navigate the way out of that injury cycle. So we can look at it from a very physiological perspective and go, okay, we're not moving well, so let's fix this kind of like this issue. But what we'll see a lot of times is people just go round and round and they're kind of stuck in this cycle of performance or, or training a certain way, injury, and then, and then they go back. There's got to be some philosophy in there about being able to switch the way that you do things because what you're currently doing isn't working. Let's be honest, training is supposed to make us feel better, not worse. And if we're continually getting injured, it's not serving the purpose apart from maybe like the immediate reward. But see, as you said, that longevity and actually long-term progression is really kind of what we're interested in as well as, okay, I feel great after that one session, but what do we look like in two, three, four, ten 10 years? What are your thoughts around that sort of stuff? Cause these things run deep, right? Mm, totally, man. It goes super deep. This is why it's almost like the more you're in coaching, the more you realize how you could sort of go off on a tangent into like neuroscience and, and really uh, like spirituality, even if we're considering the idea of what is the self and who am I? Um, it's super relevant. I mean, if you think of the function of an identity, it's probably a way of creating predictability in your life and um, doing things in a particular consistent way. You know, like how does Jack behave? How does number 17 on the pitch behave? How do they need to behave? Like what set of attributes do they have which make them fill that role effectively, you know, within a team or, you know, um, we're all playing these roles in different ways. I definitely think that's tricky. Um, you see it for sure with athletes. I even think you see it with business owners sometimes, but in a different way, maybe not around training, but the stress thing, like if I'm a business owner, um, does that mean that I have to control everything and be, be on top of everything all the time? Um, and if that's how I started, and I then progress to the point where I need to relax and balance my life a bit more. How do I remain a business owner, mm -hmm. but change my relationship with the business? Or, you know, if I'm like, yeah, I'm a rugby player. How do I change my relationship with rugby so that it's, it's not associated with that same make or break, put your body on the line all the time, flog yourself mentality. Um, I, I, I almost think, sometimes distance helps sometimes a break can help like for me i felt um that i was in a bit of a loop for a while with sort of gymnastic style training i felt like almost a bit of a failure because i wasn't achieving particular skills that i'd had in mind for a while and like i was pushing myself to train really hard to get them but then i would always drop off in my consistency and there would always be this internal resistance and it's like, I want to achieve, let's say a stall to press, but does the present me in my body right now want it? Or is it that I think Jack should be able to do it because that's what Jack does, you know, it, um, yeah, and in that me. example, like I, I ended up basically stopping training and just doing nothing but surf every day for four months, just didn't fucking touch any form of strength training. Um, and then I came back, was able to reframe it and have a different relationship with training. And I'm just, I just, for the last four months back, I've just been loving it again, absolutely loving it. And it just doesn't have the heaviness anymore. Just progressing. Yeah. yeah I definitely think that, that like agility within your, the sorts of training that you do, I think is so important because we, we kind of become boxed in, don't we, in our own minds and also in the communities that we spend time with. So if we're surrounded by, and, and we can't get away from it, right? So if you train at home, like a lot of our audience will do, and they're doing calisthenics, they probably follow quite a lot of calisthenic stuff on social media. So they're constantly being sort of shown what other people are doing, how other people's training is progressing. These are things that I should be doing. If you're into weightlifting or you go to a bodybuilding gym, or you go to CrossFit, whatever it might be, that, that influence is constantly sort of telling you who you are to a point. And it is that kind of bravery. And um, yeah, it's, as you say, it's like, it's like, I, I don't really, I'm, I'm just doing this because this is what I want to do. Rather than being like, I might have done calisthenics for five years. Like I'll give you an example. I've just joined a CrossFit box like two, two three weeks ago. Having done calisthenics for, 
seven years, Jacko, maybe something like that. Yeah. Um, and there was a, there's a lot of that time when Jacko resonated with this because I saw him nod at the same time as you <laughs> mentioned it, where we were learning skills because we thought that that's what we should be able to do to have credibility and relevancy in that calisthenic space. And as we've matured and come through it, we've kind of gone like, I got to the stage where I was training hard stuff, like particularly around hand balancing, like trying to get full planche and, um, yeah, I was just, I just, I stopped enjoying it because the training was like grinding into not, not in terms of like necessary intensity, that was difficult, but it was just like the mindset around that sort of like, I've got to do isometric holes today. And they, I got to a point, it's like, I don't need to do this and I'm not enjoying it. So why do I train? And it was, it wasn't, it got, it went past the stage of going, I just don't feel like I have to do this right now. And mm. I kind of flit in and out of these things. Um, in terms of, I feel like I want to do it and I play around with it for a bit and I don't, but I've, over the last kind of two years, I've much kind of like settled into, because this is me and this is how I want to train. And I do bits of this, but I've kind of like, I don't feel at the moment, at least the need to push down to harder and harder skills because I'm enjoying some variability and a bit of diversity in my training. Um, and I think to your point, it's just like, that sometimes comes with a break. It sometimes comes with a bit of just courage to step out and go, I'm just going to change the way that I'm doing things, whether that's coming into calisthenics or going out of calisthenics. Like it, mm -hmm. I don't really care. What I'm more interested in is people's wellness and, and enjoyment of what they're doing, because that's what's going to actually bring more fulfillment to their lives. Yeah. There, there's, cause there's this, um, this tension I always think behind you mentioned, uh, I think actually tip you, well, you both mentioned it and Tim with your start, be question around like identity. And if someone we identify with, either the sport we do or the job, or if you know, um, Jackie mentioned about like um, business owners, you're like identify as being like the person of the business if you started it. And we, I always think that, and because I definitely have it myself and I think you just see it with a lot of, a lot of us that we have this, there's this um, tussle between, we like to be part of something and community is important for our like mental well-being. So to, to be part of something, we sort of like then, join a group or we like take on the label of being a calisthenics guy or a crossfit guy or girl or whatever it may be and then at the same time that which then makes us feel part of something which is good at the same time it then sort of like can make us feel like we're then oh, I'm, I'm then in this box and like you know me and tim have spoken about this plenty of times before and it, it's just a good example to go well what 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 is calisthenics we talk about coming from two greek words kalos and stenos meaning beauty and strength it doesn't mean planche, but like the, uh, people like, do you know what I mean? It doesn't, it doesn't specifically mean that. Um, and if it means body weight training, then anyone that's doing body weight training, they're, they're doing that. And um, what that looks like for each person, I think it's far greater, has far more power, is far more beautiful when it's like, and, and this is the conversation I'd like to have with people. If someone says like, I do calisthenics or I do body weight training or I do gymnastics, whatever it is that you'd like to say, okay, what does that look like for you? And if that looks like hard planches and front levers, like great. But if that just, if that doesn't, and it means something completely different for you, but it's just you doing body weight training in whatever form it is, like let's have that conversation. Cause ultimately I've said this before to Tim is like, there's because whatever, whether you do CrossFit, whether you play, even I always think of like golf, is like the ideal sport because you never really have to retire from golf like people do people take up golf when they retire so like you could potentially but there's even a point where you become too old and too fragile you can't even swing that club anymore so whatever sport that you do or every exercise that you do at some point you're not going to be able to do it anymore so like i like doing human flags well there'll be a point when i'm too old and too weak and too rubbish to be able to do human flags anymore and whether i have a break now to give us that mental clarity but being able to accept that and be comfortable with when you take all those things away am i still happy with myself when i can't do any of these things that make me feel good and i think incidentally, that's a big challenge incidentally jacko before we let jake respond to all of that little download that Sorry, we've just given yeah. him, um, <laughs> i am looking forward to we've like <laughs> I'm looking forward to the viral video in like 30 years time when you're 70 or 80 maybe. And you're like, cause I look at these people that are in like, you see these things on Facebook or whatever, where it's like, here's these like 90 year olds going to CrossFit every week. And it's yeah. like, I love that. Yeah. I just think that's brilliant. So you, I think you're gonna have to wait another like 30 or 40 years for your first viral video, but it's gonna be a good one when it comes around. I Jack's think. looking at my hair again, like that, that gray guy, I thought he was 55 already. <laughs> I wanna be the old yeah, no. grip dude. You know, like where it's like, Ooh, you know, like, it, and he, you have to get like the suntan as well, which I'm never going to get here in the UK, but it's like, you know, like offensively like shredded. 
but like really old. And it's like, God, oh, look at that guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you look at those guys and you're like, fuck me, you're in good shape. But you also look a little bit like some kind of leather couch. <laughs> yeah. Do you eat? I don't know. What's going on here? <laughs> but you can't have it all, can you? You've got to pick, your, <laughs> to pick what you want. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Any thoughts I, on I it think... there, Jack? We just give you a proper download. You can just like just go for it. I oh. want any of that love it I, I love it man um I, well, I feel like it's always easiest to talk about things in reverse order you know when people ask you like three questions it's almost easier to answer the third one than yeah, the yeah. second one than the first one <laughs> i don't um, even know if i asked a question i think i just said a lot of stuff but <laughs> yeah um well like with the with the aging thing you know yeah what are we going to do when we're old like th there's a point of deterioration as much as i hate the 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 kind of cop out of oh i'm getting old i can't do this like i don't believe that you should just resign to that i think you should absolutely challenge it but there's also a point where you have to accept that things will deteriorate and mm. at that point i think it becomes useful to to be familiar with the idea that you can practice on this spectrum from outward and externally focused goals to inward and um sort of sensation based goals. So like you see this really well in, um, in dancers, I think, but pretty much, pretty much anyone who brings that inward intention into their movement practice. So on the, on one end of the uh, end of the spectrum, there's like, you know, full planches or there's like a, a one arm front lever or whatever, or a one arm handstand and one finger, on the other end of the one spectrum. Arm. <laughs> yeah, one finger, one arm, eyes closed. <laughs> and on the other end of the spectrum, there's like, I'm hardly even moving, but I'm really feeling this subtle movement within my body. And I don't even know whether I'm doing it or whether it's just happening by itself. You know, stuff like the breath or like the heartbeat or like playing with the nervous system and stuff. So there's that whole continuum. And I hope that when I'm old and, you know, infirm, or that if I were to get severely injured, that I could find just as much joy and discovery in that subtle practice as in the, um, the more extreme outward practice. Mm. Um, I think that's something a lot of the, the sort of yogi masters represent quite well, you know, um, the way you do what you do is equally as rewarding as, um, how far you can take it externally. Yeah. I think there's an interesting point there around like when you see people, I kind of, I feel like I'm, I'm sort of moved to this place and like I've been trading for a long time, but where you find those people who are probably a little bit more mature in years, but they have just got that real kind of like peace and contentment around mm. training. And you often see, you made a point before about sort of 17 year olds full of testosterone and chucking weights around trying to get huge. Um, like there's that phase that you go through and, and this is, I always thought when I start to turn this kind of tone in my voice, I'm like, this is coming like a sage of like an old man in the industry, but it's been a <laughs> while since we started. Um, and you start and you just, you just find this kind of like, yeah, there's just general peace again. This is how I train and I'm, this is how I progress. And I don't feel like I'm keeping up with anybody anymore. I'm doing me and but I'm 41 years old. Like I've been training, I've been a strength and conditioning coach since I was 13 years. And before that, a, a decent amount of training as well. It takes time to kind of go through it. And, and this is kind of, I guess, a going full circle back onto um, the question I asked before is like, what I've learned over the years of coaching athletes and you see people in lifestyle around you in your community and, and um, circles as well is like people won't change unless they want to change. So people listening to this, as Jacko said before, won't change if they don't want to change or they haven't, they're not at a stage where their situation has actually brought them to a place where they've got to confront some of this sort of stuff. But is there anything that you think is, is useful for people in terms of like, just, okay, someone's got an open mind, kind of listening to some of this stuff, but where do we, do we need to change? Is that something that we need to do? Or is it, is it, or how do we start this internal work and conversation on ourselves that basically starts to bring us that maturity probably around what training actually means to us, which is probably kind of, and what it encapsulates the kind of conversation so far. Mm. Yeah. Do we need to change? This is an interesting one because, um, you can really get on the, um, 
the escalator or the hamster wheel, probably more of a hamster wheel <laughs> of progressing, but never feeling adequate and never feeling fulfilled with your progress. Um, and even then you can have that in two ways. You know, there are those of us who we might've reached a point where we're, we're not satisfied with our progress, but we're very much satisfied that we're following our own process. So like, we know we'll never get there and we're, we're going to keep striving for things and it never ends, but you don't postpone your gratification. You enjoy the struggle. You, you find something in the day to day. Um, and I think, I think that's the beauty of these older guys, you know, who like find their rhythm and they've been doing it for, for years mm. and they're comfortable in their own skin and, and the way they do it. And at the same time, they're, they're really, they're still progressing because the thing that I've been, that I've been stuck with probably maybe like last year was this idea of do Yeah. Do I need to change at all? Do I like, what's the point? What's the point in training? Yeah. What's the point in progressing? Like, you know, I almost swung from being the 17 year old, obviously, you know, got a few years older, but I swung from that end of like, it's all about progression to, oh, you don't need progression and, and all this stuff. Like, you know, it's all bullshit. It's, it's just an internal game. You just need to be happy within your skin. And then you kind of oscillate back again and you're like, well, but I'm here for a while. I'm probably going to be around for a bit. I want to do some cool things with my life. I want to, I should probably test my limits to some degree while I can and while I'm young. So let's not make a huge deal of it, but let's, you know, have a crack. And, and it's maybe that temperance mm -hmm. or that ability to, to take a little bit of both. Um, you know, you experience the contrast first. Like I went from, you know, full on like power lifting and Olympic lifting and very blocky, hard, intense strength training to yoga and very bendy Edo portal snakey stuff. And then I go back to like, uh, the more traditional SNC again. And then I go back away from that again to some other creative thing. And sounds like the bulk and bendy program, the... Tim. <laughs> we, we've got this idea of a, a bulk and bendy program where someone wants to get big. We also want to get bendy, <laughs> which started Good. off as a joke, but it's actually something I'd like to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what it's about, man. I think, I think it's just about like bringing in, bringing in all of it, like giving a bit of love to all of it, accepting that things are going to fluctuate and that you can, you get, you can try and have both and you should see if you can have both. Mm. Um, I think yeah. to, uh, my philosophy around this at the moment is, is, is sort of going through a bit of, of an evolution to be, to be honest. And it's, I've, I've just come to the, to kind of, I'm, I'm kind of settling in my comfort place comfortable place around being content with how i train and comfortable place not being in terms of i'm not going to push stuff but just comfortable in terms of how i see things and how my landscape or, or kind of looks around training and the crux of it for me is like you need a little bit of everything and you don't actually need to be absolutely like rock star smashing it on any one thing um the fact that i'm kind of like pretty good at some calisthenic stuff like that's good and, and, and we'll stay away from the kind of like the, what that gives you from a physiological perspective. But I also think I should be able to be pretty good at like box jumps and lower body strength stuff, because that's kind of life stuff that you want. These are, these are things that's training, which is going to help me to, to, to maintain my lifestyle as I get older. And I, I need to be able to move a little bit as well, but like going hard into yoga and that's all I do. Like you're just moving away from the center of to, to one extreme where you okay, you're super bendy, but let's be honest, the majority of people, and, and I know this, I say this and I always kind of like worry because I don't worry about it actually at all, that's losing sleep, but what I'm conscious <laughs> of is people are like, if I say that a lot of people that do a lot of yoga aren't very strong, that's true, right? So there are strong yogis, don't get me wrong, but like there's the, the general rule, because we get really good at getting bendy, we don't get really good at getting strong. Like a lot of people who do yoga can't do a pull-up, for example. Um, and I think that's important in terms of just what the kind of physical attributes are that you are, you, you're going to want for, for years to come, if you're going to go and live the life you want to live, or if your lifestyle never requires to put you in a position where you might be able to need some more body strength, then maybe you don't. But I just, that's, I just think there's, there's like, Ido Portel said it well a while ago, of just like he, uh, he's kind of first person I'd probably recognize as, as coining it, but it probably came from somebody before that, but it's, it's generalism over specialism. Um, and, and I actually think that's where the money is for most people, maybe not when you're younger, maybe when you're younger specialized because you've got an opportunity to maybe go and do something. But as your training progresses and our audience is, is probably maturing with Jacko and I, 
that generalism is a, is a good place to be. be. Be okay at quite a lot of stuff and you're probably going to do really well. Mm. Can I can I try and go like a um, a layer deeper in when we're talking about purpose? If, and it, I almost feel like, you know, we got a, I haven't got um, kids, but Tim's got two little ones and there'll be a point, I imagine, Tim, where has Jack gone through that why phase? Where you go like, um, you know, don't touch that. It, it's hot. Why? Well, because it will burn you. Why? And then you've got to like answer questions of like, explain, like, you, know, you keep going, why, 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 why? So like the per, like going, like being good at whatever training thing, like why? Like why? Because I think a lot of the time there's this challenge of um, my purpose or my sense of like happiness or contentment being exploring different things that okay, I enjoy do, do I enjoy doing that just because I'm good at it and like stuff that I'm not good at I don't enjoy so then I like push into just the things that I feel like I'm good at because I get more enjoyment from that and being better th at that is that going to make me then even happier but my purpose has surely got to be like my purpose in life has surely got to be wider than that and that's why when we get like really, really good at then our thing in training that might be one of the most, might be the most, one of the biggest things in my life for a lot of people, um, we, uh, we still then feel not content and not actually happy, even though we've completed the thing, because in actual fact, it's just a bit of a mirage around, it's not, the, it's not giving you that purpose. Where do you st where yeah. do you how, when you're talking about the philosophy side of things, like I've got no I I've got no formal training at all in that whatsoever. It's just like my own crazy mind going bonkers. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you need formal training, man. I think that just watching the crazy mind and having good conversations is like the highest form of philosophy. I reckon it's just fucking shit talking. <laughs> you come up with profound stuff when you talk shit. It's amazing. Like. Um, yeah <laughs> it shouldn't just be for books um yeah i think the the why thing is like some of us can't really help it you know i think some of us don't really grow up past that why thing um and and i personally feel like if i'm not asking why and if i don't have the freedom to ask why in my life then i feel kind of stifled but at the same time I can kind of infinitely regress into more and more and more why questions and overthink to such a degree that like, I forget that, you know, there's enough meaning in just kind of feeling what is just, just, you know, being with it. You don't have to understand it to enjoy it kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, well, I think about that too, is like just riffing with this idea when I'm, when I'm asking why I'm often if I'm intellectually asking why it feels like it's coming from up high in my head, it feels like it's very sort of calculating analytical. And if I'm, if I'm curious, curiosity feels more like a, a bit of a full body state than asking why it's more like, Oh, what happens if I do this? So you can kind of ask why by doing something, by trying something. And then I think things like play are other great ways to open up this door of why we do things and what happens if, mm. um, and that can be like really embodied. So I feel like there are different ways to ask this question too. You know, you can, you can kind of wrap your brain around things and think why you can, you can be curious by just exploring without an agenda. You can put yourself in new environments, new situations with new people, maybe in a new sport. And you can kind of use that, to get answers to why questions without having to worry about thinking too much. So that's really helped me because I've been someone who overthinks terribly. And, um, I find the more I just mix up my environment and go, go meet other people, the more I find the answers I'm looking for without even having to like constantly seek for them and be hungry for them. I don't know about I you think, guys. Yeah. I think it's an interesting one because it's, um, it makes me think around like sort of a clarity on, on purpose. And I think, like I, again, I don't want to make this sound like a generational conversation, but like I look back on my own, on my own sort of like history, and be like, well, how long has it taken for me to get clear on my purpose? 
Like you, you kind of have a micro purpose. Like when I was at university, the purpose was to get a degree, have a good time, play rugby. And um, when I came out of university, the purpose was to go travel and have a good time, go scuba diving. Like I, there wasn't a kind of like a bigger purpose narrative because I was, you, as you say, you're exploring the world around you and you're sort of going, what is it that I actually want to do? But I don't know how mindful I was at that time that I was really seeking that thing. I was kind of probably just quite living in the moment and having a good time. But to your point, that's kind of play, right? That's that's how we can start to refine and filter out what we like doing, what we don't like doing, why we do things, what brings us enjoyment and fulfillment, satisfaction, what kind of sets us and doesn't resonate with us and we move away from. I think there, there's probably a space of where you've got to find as you as you progress through adulthood of purpose becomes more clear because career becomes defined, family becomes more defined, that sort of stuff. So you're going to go, well, I can now start to channel myself into these things which feel a little bit more permanent. But then you kind of get also then you hit people who have this kind of midlife crisis because the whole thing is kind of caved in and gone like, I don't really know what I'm doing here anymore. So how like it's that, that as you say, that thing of play, playing in a movement sense, but playing with the world around you, I think is also quite important. It's just you constantly kind of just kind of flex your like your circle a little bit and just explore how that might kind of need to just adapt and evolve. And then as we go back to, as we've said before, not being afraid to change, like I read Adam Grant's book, um, think again, like over the summer and, and, and really enjoyed it It's a very simple, easy way for people to understand a little bit about the power of not of knowing what you don't know. And actually it's good to be wrong because if you're wrong, you can be more right effectively for you on a, mm. on a, on a personal level. Um, and not being able, not being afraid to kind of shift and change your mind. I think that's a, that's a really powerful thing. And I think within training, that's a conversation we probably don't have very often. So this is actually, I think hopefully would be a lot of texture for people to just go away and it's a perfect philosophical conversation because there's absolutely no answers and just lots of stuff to go in and go, I don't know, this is kind of <laughs> my brain hurt and I need to think about it. Yeah, hundred percent. It's like, um, oh, getting outside of your, your norm, getting outside of your usual environment and just being exposed to new ideas, new perspectives uh, has to be like one of the most rapid ways to grow I can think of. Mm. And like, growth often tends to be a bit scary and, you know, it's comfortable to be within something, you know, and to do the same thing that you've done before. Um, but it's only comfortable until it starts to feel a bit too predictable or a bit too limiting, you know? Um, and that's where I can, I can relate professionally. It almost seems like you get, uh, there's a financial incentive to be consistent and to put yourself in a box. So you can be recognizable as being the guy who does this, mm. but on a personal level, there's always a part of us that doesn't want to sacrifice another part of potential that we could have. Um, so it's really tricky. Um, there's balance. I, I'm always playing with it, trying to figure it out. I, I don't know if I ever will, but this balance between willingly, um, sacrificing things and saying no to things so that you can really dive into being good at one thing or just do good work in one field. And at the same time, stay open enough in what you interact with and who you interact with mm. that you leave the door open for change and growth. Yeah. I, f I find it, um, I'm going to blow smoke up your ass now, Jack, but, um, so some people are, some people are, uh, like my wife is very uncomfortable at taking, um, uh, taking praise. So, uh, we'll see if you feel uncomfortable. I, I, um, <laughs> it's just so refreshing to have a conversation with someone where um, just very openly going like, well, I ain't got it figured out. We, we may never have it figured out. I haven't got all the answers. No, some stuff that can help you if you, you know, if you want to go down that line and we'll, we'll explore that together. Um, I'm not going to fix you if you're injured. You are the best, like, version of yourself and you actually know this but we're just gonna i'm gonna help this you know explore this through movement and explore you get yourself to understand for a bit deeper but ultimately it's it's you because i know that i've been in this trap before where it's like i want to go see a physio and like physio fix me and it's like you, you're trying to like give the responsibility away and actually that just doesn't long term um doesn't work and I'm very, this is the one podcast, Tim, that I think would be fascinating for us in 10 years time when me and you were in, in fit, we're 50 going like, 
how, how is it then check how is the philosophy or how is the ideas around trading and stuff um changed again because i don't think there'll be many other podcasts that i'll want to listen back to in 10 years time to see what we were talking about because it was sort of like i think i feel like i'll i'll know whereas i think that that's that this is um yeah that this is really um uh, really interesting it gives and, and a little example where there'll be some people listening to this will be like guys you're going a bit fluffy um where a, a practical example of um this will be like my my sort of final thing before we wrap it up that we had a coach come in when i was playing rugby and um he he was he was Australian, I think, um, and he came in. Uh, it was like a one-off session. He was doing like so. We were all a bit like new coach for one session, or everyone's a bit like. Ugh. And uh, he literally went um, right, guys. Uh, there's the ball. Um, you play, and we were like, "Well, what's the drill? What are we doing?" He was like, "Whatever you want," and we were like, "Well, where are we? Where's the? What's the pitch?" He was like, "You decide." And we were all just like, well, this is rubbish. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Like, he hasn't given us any coaching. Duh, duh. Like, I remember just thinking, like, what is this? is just absolute garbage. But because we were, like, being conditioned to, like, tell me the rules, tell me the constraints, duh, 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 then I'll try and play the game that basically I already know how to play it, rather than he gave us freedom, and we literally couldn't handle the freedom. And I feel like that's what this conversation has been a bit like for me. There'll be people that will listen to it and go, like, they can't handle the freedom of like, you didn't give me the top three things I need to do for my handstand or the top three things I need to do to, to stop being injured. Um, and that's, that, I th that's where I'm, yeah, that's where I'm leaving this, like being back in that place to be challenged again, to go like, take the freedom and like try to explore it. Unless I've missed the point. <laughs> No, man, there is no, no point, Jackie. That's a beauty of philosophy. There's my no dad, point. Here, actually, I'm sorry, I said I've, I've got one of them. My dad said that he had a, a friend when he was at uni doing a philosophy um, degree, and he had a, his the exam question sat down in the exam hall. Apparently, the exam. I don't know if this this might be my dad talking a bit of like a bit of spice, a bit of BS, and maybe this is like a classic story. And I've been led to believe my dad made this up, or his 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 mate had this. But the the question on the philosophy paper was. Um, is this a question? That was the question. Write, you know, write a, write a, you know, write 10,000 words on that. And uh, he reckons his mate just wrote, is this an answer? And then walked out. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> it, that might be, that might be BS. My dad might have had it's me one pants of those, down like, all year. University stories. Yeah, now now everyone's anyway. like, okay, you're an idiot. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Jack, Maybe. any final thoughts before we wrap this up, mate? It's been great to go through a little bit of a, a sort of slightly different conversation to what we would normally have. Um, and uh, yeah, just I'll, give, I'll, let, I'll pass the final word over to you if you've got anything you want to sign off with and then we will and tell people how to get in touch with you as well if they want to find out a little bit more. Mm, for sure, for sure. Um, yeah, I, I think that you hit the maybe the crux of the whole thing there. Like what, what's it all about? And uh, also what's the role of a coach and someone like, you, you know, you guys putting out quality information and some of it will be like, okay, do this. And some of it will be like, explore this. And then maybe occasionally there's something thrown out, which is just, here's a thing, do what you want. Yeah. Um, I think that the role I, I, I think of in my coaching, cause I do some one-to-one -one coaching, the role that I play changes from person to person, depending on how far into that process they are. Sometimes people want direct linear progression and then we'll go through another phase in their life where they just want exploration or any mix. But the role of a coach or a teacher um, can kind of go from the instructor to someone who is just like a, a friendly face who understands you, who's a reference point, who's going to be there to, to sort of, you know, hold the fort while you explore. And, um, I think it's really cool to be able to do both. Um, and in your own practice to do both too, you know, periods of I'm going to progress. I want to be here and then periods of, okay, where am I now and what next? And just keeping, I guess, a, a healthy balance between the two. So I love awesome. it. Yeah. Mate, thanks so much for yeah, spending some you. time with us. Um, we really appreciate it. And I'm sure there's a ton of stuff in there that people are going to go away and, uh, cogitate i sometimes throw that word Ooh. in when it's uh, but they're gonna go mull they're gonna go and chew it through i like it cogitate is a good word um so jack where can people find you um on instagram at underscore attuned 
and my website attuned.space. Uh, and that's about it. And you can also send me an email. You know, I love chats like this podcasts. Um, if anything here resonates with you, just drop me a line and say hi. It's hello at attuned dot space. So cool. perfect. We'll put all those in the Mate, yeah, thank we'll you. Put all those in the show notes so people can click uh, straight through. Um, thank you everyone um, for watching. For watching, if you're watching on YouTube or listening on your favorite podcast platform, um, thank you, Jack, for coming on. Jack would love it if you gave the podcast. A five star review, wouldn't you, Jack? Wherever people are listening uh, to this from, it's going to take you two minutes. What does five stars even mean, though? What does yeah, it mean? Exactly. <laughs> Maybe one is the best, but no, generally. Well, no, just because someone decided it's five, why is it one? No, actually, five? this is what I want people to do. I want you to do a five stars because that just helps with the rankings. And then I want you to write, is this a review? Question mark. And then you've nailed it. Then you've nailed it. Do it. Be that guy or girl. Be the first one. The first one wins, wins a prize. We haven't decided what that is yet. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Cheers, Jack. We'll be in touch again soon, mate. Thanks a lot. Thanks very much, guys. Chat to you soon. There we go, Timbo. I told you you'd like this one. A little bit, a little bit, a little bit of fluff, a little bit of depth, a little bit of width, a bit of everything. <laughs> we went narrow and wide, shallow and deep. Anyway, <laughs> we're generalists, not specialists, all that sort of good stuff. Um, take some of that away, guys. Spend some time thinking about it. And yeah, if you want to change, change. If you don't, think about it again in six months and see what's changed. Cause something will I'm, I'm, I'm now, I'm sort of like asking the question, do you even train bro with a completely, di with a completely different set of eyes? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, there's lots to take away from that one. So enjoy it. Just as a reminder, our black Friday offer is currently on Go and buy yourself a handstand program. If you got stuck on a plateau or you are really struggling to progress your handstand, or you just want to get started, any of those problems that you're having, they're all dealt with in our coaching program for the handstands and we not just like a it's not just a page of like 20 exercises we actually explain the whole process there's a little bit of education and learning into doing there and that in builds on your your actual understanding not only the handstand but also the philosophy of why you're doing what you're doing see great segue timbo it's also you know it's literally it's broken down to modules uh, sessions week by week so you know you've got, you, you've got the pathway there from literally beginner all the way into your handstand and uh, the the code is Black Friday in capitals. Black Friday, 50% off. So rather than 99 quid, it is £49. One-off purchase, lifetime access. Get money back guarantee. If it don't get your hands done, you didn't like it, give you money back. I'm not bothered. Get involved. Because we know it's good. All right, until next time, keep exploring keep... your... Oh, butchered it, Jacko. Until next time, you go. Keep exploring your physical potential and your philosophy around training through movement, strength, and play. I feel like the outros, we get into a stage where it's almost like, keep exploring your physical potential through movement, strength, and play, and this other thing we just talked about. Anyway, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that. That's offline brand meeting. Class dismissed. <laughs>